hello and welcome to this video and in this video we are going to be taking a look at collection views so instead of table views which you will see is some of the same stuff collection views you can display multiple images multiple data in a nice and sorted collection as the name implies so that's what we are going to be taking a look at in this video so if that is something you want to learn how to do or want to learn how to oh much win how to use collection views then just keep watching and we will be taking a look at how to do it right now so let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project and I'm going to make this a single view application and I'm just going to name it collection. This is going to be my collection and let's click next and just save it wherever you want to save it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight to my storyboard and I'm going to make a small adjustment here. So what I basically want, you, uh, what you can picture it as is making a completely normal table view. It's almost exactly the same procedure and as we'll see, it's a lot of the same stuff. So let's search up collection view and you can use a collection view controller like you can use a table view controller, but I'm just going to go ahead and build it from scratch and just use a collection view. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to stretch it wide and I'm just going to place my old boring constraints which are very useful. Just like that. And then as you can see instead of having table view rows we have table view cells or collection uh, views. So here we can give this cell here an identifier and I'm just going to name it cell. Simple and easy so that we can remember it easily. Now just like a table view, we need to select it and then control drag up to this yellow button and connect data source and the delegate. And when we have done that, we're pretty much uh, good to go. We can then jump over to our view controller and start doing some damage here. Now two things that we need to add is, um, is our uh, UI collection view data source and our UI collection view delegate. So instead of table view data source and table view delegate, we use collection view data source and collection view delegate. And now we're going to need two functions. The first one is going to define number of um, views in the collection view. So, and this function is named number of, uh, let's see, number of items in section. And this is going to define how many um, items we want. And of course, the amount of items that we want is going to be the same as the amount of data that we want to display. So let's create an array here where we store our data, let array, and it's going to contain strings and it's going to be equal to a string filled with images. So I'm going to use images and I've made a nice map, I've been out and have taken some pictures and just going to drag them in and if you want to access these just click the link in the description below and you will have the project files together with all the resources that I used. So I'm just dragging it in here and as you can see I named all my images 12345.jpg uh, uh, so just make sure that you name it like that and then what we can do is we can just paste it in right here. So we're going to do like this and actually we can remove that JPEG and just write, let's see, we are just going to write one, two, three, all the way up to 10. So let's do that, two, three, four. There are easier ways of doing this, but I'm just going to do it like this for now. Six, seven, let's see, eight, nine, and let's see, and then 10. Just like that, so here we have all, all our images and the number of items are now going to be, we're going to return this array.count. So the amount of items that we want in our collection view is going to be the same as uh, the number of images that we have. And that uh, should be pretty obvious uh, so that we have the space to display all of our images. So here we have defined the amount of view views that we need. And next we are going to populate these views. So here up here we are creating the views, the uh, equal amount of views as to the images that we have and now we populate them with the image. And the way we do that is we use a function named cell for 
item at index path. So almost the same as for table views. And then here we create our cell. So let cell is equal to collection view dot the queue reusable cell. Uh, we are going to go for, let's see, we're going to go for this one. And the reuse identifier we gave it was cell. And then index path, we are just going to put index path. Uh, we are going to use this one. Make sure that it's with a capital I. And then uh, here we have our cell. Now we also want it to convert it to a uh, custom cell. So right now, if we head over to our storyboard, we have a plain old boring cell right here. But what we want, what we want to do is, if you want to display an image here, we are going to have to uh, alter with it or make it uh, custom. Just like a table view cell, we can display text in it, but if we want to display something else, we're going to have to customize it. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to give this, um, we are going to select this one and we're just going to say cell size for now is going to be 100 times 100. And then we're going to drag in our an image view and just place it within this little box adjust it so that it fits nicely and then we are going to place the constraints so that the size stays the same so zero 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 and then just add those constraints and we're good to go but there's one more thing that we need to create and that is another file for this custom table uh, not table view cell but this view so let's go to uh, file new file and we are going to create a cocoa touch class and then we're going to uh, make sure that it's a subclass of ui collection view cell and then you can call it whatever you want to i'm just going to call it my cell and the reason we're creating another file for this is so that we can program this cell so that we can give that cell some inst instructions and those instructions are basically going to be um, adding an image view to it so if we find my cell here then we have to drag this over to the file that we just created. Let's see, we just have to connect it first. So let's click here. Oops, let's get some more space. And then we're going to select the cell. And then we are going to set the, let's see, the class to my cell. So the file that we just created. So we're selecting the cell in our collection view. And we're setting the class to be equal to my cell, which is the class that uh, we just created. And now we can bring up this split view and we can control drag our image view into this file. So select the image view, hold down control and drag it in. And then we can name this whatever we want. I'm just going to name it my image uh, view, just like that, connect it up. And now we should be able to access that image view within our view controller. And the way we do that is we index set. This has to be index path. There we go. That should work better. And then we are going to convert it to the custom cell that we just created. So my cell. And now we're able to uh, access the image view of that cell. So now we can say uh, cell dot and I believe this has to be a small i, my mistake earlier, it needs to be a small i, cell dot my image, let's see, my image view dot image is equal to ui image, let's see, image, and it's named, and the name of this is going to be our array at index path dot row, and then we just have, have to add the file ending, which is .jpg, just like that. And now we should be good to go. We just need to return the finished cell, which we do like this. And now we are going to run this program and see what we've got so far. So as you can see here, we have our application with all of our images collected in our Im uh, collection view. And as you can see, the images are a bit distorted. So what we can do is we can head over to our storyboard. We can select our image view and we can choose, uh, instead of scale to fill, we can choose aspect fill. That way it will look a bit nicer. Uh, so I'm just going to launch it and see how it looks now. And then we're going to do one little change to our collection view. 
and that is going to be to adjust the spacing between each view. So as you can see, uh, right now there's a lot of space between some of them and little space here, so it looks a bit awkward. And that is something that we are going to ch uh, change right now. And the way we do that is we uh, go, we, uh, we access our view did load function up here. And then we are going to um, adjust the size of each view to this width of the screen. So they are going to adjust to the width of the screen and fill the screen accordingly. And you will see how we do that in a second. Uh, so what we're first going to do is we're going to access the width of the screen. So we can say item size, which is going to be the size of our item, is going to be UI screen dot main dot bounce dot width divided by three and I'm also going to say minus three for now and you will see in a second why I'm doing that. Now that we have the width of the screen or the width of each item and as it says right here the width of the item is going to be a third of the screen minus three pixels uh, or points and you will see why we do that in a little while. And then we're going to create a new layout here that's going to override our current layout. And the way we do that is cr we create a layout constant and we set that equal to UI collection view flow layout. And now we can start customizing our layout. So you can say layout uh, dot section inset is going to be equal to UI edge insets and we are going to define the top, left, bottom, and right. And I'm just going to put in 20 here, zero here, uh, 10 here, and zero here. So here we're just defining uh, the inset, and now we're also going to define the size of our, um, of our little, uh, <clears throat> of each item or each image. And that is going to be, let's see, item size which is going to be equal to CG size. And then here we can define the width and the height. And we are going to use integers. So let's choose this one. And we're going to say item size is going to be the width and item size is going to be the height. And we probably need to uh, convert this to an integer or is it that already? It looks like it. So then we can just continue on here and we can say layout dot minimum uh, minimum uh, internum spacing and that is going to be equal to three and then we can also say layout dot minimum line spacing and that's also going to be three and that is why the width is going to be uh, the third of the screen width minus three so that we have space or enough place for the spacing between each image and now we have to add this layout to our collection view and in order to do that, we jump out to our storyboard and we just need to make a quick connection here with our view controller. So let's select our collection view, control drag it over, and I'm just going to name it my collection, uh, collection view, connect it, and then we can jump over to our view controller again and we can do the final touch by just adding the layout, my collection view dot collection view layout is equal to layout and that's really it we created a layout i'm just going to go over it um, after we have seen that everything works brilliantly so that you understand everything here uh, but what we're basically doing is we're creating a new layout and overriding the old one so as you can see this looks much better and although you can't scroll uh, yet we can simply copy paste this and we can add it one more time and then we get um a lot more images and that way you will see that we're able to scroll and as you can also see it looks much more nicer this way um, than what we previously had or the way it was previously displayed as you can see now now it's a nice and even grid exactly as we wanted and of course you can do a lot more to a collection view so if that is something you want to see make sure that you comment that in the in the comment section below and we will be taking a look at that but as you can see right now it looks very nice so what we basically did here is we did exactly like we would if we were to create a table view 
we defined how many boxes we wanted. So how, how many of these boxes we wanted. We said that the amount of boxes that we need is going to be equal to the amount of images that we have. Then with this function right here, we populated each one of these boxes. So right here, they were just empty boxes. Now we added an image to each of the boxes and then it displayed as a collection view. But in order to refine it a bit more, we created a new layout right here based on the width of the screen. And we uh, agreed upon that the the size of each um, each box or each image is going to be a third of the screen roughly. So that's what we did here. Then we defined our new layout here and we also defined the spacing between e each image uh, in the side and at the bottom, how much that should be. As you can see, we can also say that that should be 10, but then we also have to change it to 10 up here else we will get a space problem. And then we added this new layout to our collection view so that this layout becomes the active one. And let's just see what happens if I make this change. And it should exactly be images just with more spacing. So that's what we did here. And as you can see, this function or this statement right here just sets the margins. Really, because you're doing that there, we can remove it in this case and scenario, and it will look exactly the same. I'm just going to launch it to make sure that that is the case. But if my reasoning is correct, then that shouldn't make a difference uh, to this program. So let's just see, because then we it's much simpler and easier. And that is indeed the case. So awesome. So all you need is really this in order to create our new layout so that it looks like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this little quick video on how to create a collection view. If you did, make sure that you click the subscribe button and then I will be happy to see you back in the next video. And as always, thank you for watching.